exhibit hall in Raleigh, North Carolina. Very exciting place to be. We're going to take a little walk through and see what's here. So let's see if I can show you a better view here. Yeah, let me give you a quick overview from up here. I'm just about to go down into this exhibit hall, which has artists internationally and all sorts of, of uh, instruments and, and uh, museums and things like that. So let's take you through on a little tour. I uh, made it here on Monday. I've been here for the conference all week. It's three days of a business conference and uh, the, what's called the Bluegrass Ramble, which is where a bunch of musicians, uh, bands from all over the world will play uh, throughout the city of Raleigh. And I'm here at the Exhibit Hall. Uh, the week will conclude in a series of performances all throughout the streets of Raleigh. They, they uh, are going to close out the roads and uh, change the city into a bluegrass haven. So let me share with you a couple things here. I'm um, walking by the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame. And the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame here is, um, this is a, uh, a museum in Owensboro, Kentucky. I actually had the privilege of visiting um, for the first time uh, this, this year. I was actually at the Romp, which is a festival that's put on uh, at, uh, at the Bluegrass Hall of Fame I'm, and down in Owensboro. And I was there uh, playing, uh, performing with a friend of mine and the Stillhouse Junkies were opening up the party there. And uh, they also, Chris Jocelyn, the, the person uh, who uh, works here and organizes the Bluegrass Hall of Fame, he's also involved with Bluegrass Unlimited. He's in Bluegrass Unlimited magazine here. And Bluegrass, Bluegrass Unlimited has been, been uh, you know, posting for 40-something years now, and uh, they do a great job telling you what's going on in the bluegrass industry. We've got, would you mind, I'm YouTube live in here. You want to say anything about the... Sure. Hi, I'm Blythe. I'm the tech director over at the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame Museum. Um, great spot, tons of great exhibits. We've got an exhibit on Jerry Garcia coming up early 2024. Uh, until then, we've got tons of shows that I'll be working on over in the museum. Sierra Hole's coming up in October. Marty Stewart is back with Superlatives in November. So much great stuff. I love working there. And I, I had a chance to see the new performance hall. It's really beautiful, uh, intimate space. There's probably, what, 200, 300 seats? Uh, it's 450. 450, and, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's about, I sit in the back for every show, and every seat, you know, it feels like, you know, it's like in the Ryman, you know, and it's, there's no bad seat really in the house. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's great. So cool. And uh, I was just speaking with Chris Jocelyn earlier, who was here, and uh, Chris actually collaborated with Pete Wernick to put, put on a, uh, a bluegrass jam camp. So be on the lookout for that, because Chris and I are, are working to bring a bluegrass jam camp to the uh, Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame. But let's thank Blythe here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. All right. And so um, also here, look at these fun little Oh, I love this right here. Hi, Deb. I'm live on YouTube. You, could you tell us anything about the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame or the um, the Bluegrass Unlimited magazine? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am Deb Filma with the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum. We're in Oldsboro, Kentucky. We're the only repository for bluegrass music, general bluegrass music in the world. And we produce Bluegrass Unlimited magazine. We're really proud of that. We do some rock festival. We uh, did that's great. And, and how long has the uh, the Bluegrass Unlimited magazine been going on? It's been going on about 40 years, I think. But we only uh, required, or acquired it about three years ago, mm -hmm. and so we gave it a new look. But it's still, we still kept the integrity of the magazine with the content that people really want. So yeah, I'm sorry, if, you I'm have, if you don't have it, you it's need to good, sign right? up. Oh, it's a really, really beautifully well done magazine. You can get the printed printed copies like you see here. Uh, let's turn the video around. Yeah, 
printed copies like we see here, you can get I th an online form as well. I, I think they have. Well, when you get the printed copy, you get a lot of content online as well. Online as well, yeah. So you can get the podcast and lessons. Very nice, yeah. And uh, and also, when is the romp? Romp is the last weekend in June, 2024. Awesome. Thank you so much, Deb. All right, let's continue our tour here through the. Uh, well, actually, I'll take you this way here. So you'll see at the end is the International Pavilion, where there's going to be uh, international artists on stage. I just saw my bluegrass leadership classmates uh, from 2023 uh, performing. Uh, that was Christy Cox from Australia and uh, Christopher Howard Williams, uh, who runs a bluegrass festival in uh, in France called La Roche, is there moderating, and another band member of, or another classmate, Ellie, uh, Hankinson was playing there as well uh, with with Christy Cox. So let me take you through. So you'll see all sorts of instruments here. We've got Martin guitars. We've got uh, Deering Banjo Company. Uh, beautiful banjos and a uh, ban little banjolin here. That's pretty neat too. Uh, red diamond mandolins. We got Ellis mandolins. Like my buddy in the Rutabaggers plays an Ellis mandolin down there. And uh, we've got Cedar Hollow Mountain uh, guitars here. Collings guitars, one of my personal favorites. Uh, I play in a group called On the Trail, and uh, my bandmate uh, Tom Lizzie plays at Collings, uh, really well known. Here's a couple of my buddies jamming. Here's this Nelson. Nelson uh, filled in with the Rutabaggers last year. He lives in Boston. Great bass player here. And uh, you'll see jamming like that happening everywhere here in Raleigh uh, at the Bluegrass Music, uh, World of Bluegrass Festival, which happens every year in, uh, in Raleigh. Just go on YouTube Live here. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. Oh, cool. So cool. Great. Hope to see you there again sometime. Uh, all right, so here's Ear Trumpet Labs. Uh, you probably have seen these microphones. Um, you probably have seen these um, all over. This is like the industry standard in bluegrass and country and acoustic music now. Really beautiful, um, gorgeous microphones. My band On The Trail actually performs just around uh, one of these mics. Uh, it'll pick up an entire band uh, and, and a lot of the bluegrass bands will play around that. You'll see them up on the international stage, which I'll share in just a minute. Um, you'll see those in action. And I uh, really love the Ear Trumpet Labs. They have the, uh, diff they're tuned for all sorts of frequencies. Uh, we've got one that you can use on your bass, acoustic bass too, that sounds incredible. I believe this is the one, one of the ones we have, the Edwina. Um, it's amazing. And then you already got them, so you get this the is, uh, I believe, similar to the one we have. We have a Louise, and uh, th they do a great job of um, uh, picking up a, a whole group. Great for for all sorts of music, not just bluegrass. It'd be awesome for a wedding if you're playing and singing guitar. Say you wouldn't need two microphones. Um, and they have this great pickup on the bass here uh, called the Nadine. I have several friends that go. use this one. So we'll, we'll see those in action in a little bit, some more jamming over here. Um, so here is the, this is the International Pavilion. So these are, actually this, this group here, Red Wine, um, just won an award, a Distinguished Achievement Award. They are a group out of Italy playing bluegrass music and so they kind of forged their own way here and uh, we're seeing them here at the International Pavilion. Um, they're using ear trumpet mics. Let's see if I can zoom in here. So you see it's picking up the singing and the, the banjo is playing into an ear trumpet mic right there. Uh, and ear trumpet mic is uh, there as well. So this is the International Pavilion. Here actually we had a band from, from South Korea a bluegrass band from South Korea. They got a $5,000 International Bluegrass Music Association grant um, to attend and perform. And then actually, the year after, they are uh, they are gifted a tour to all these American uh, American uh, venues, including the uh, uh, Station Inn, which is a world famous bluegrass venue. Uh, they also perform at Gray Fox and. Uh, 
then up at the uh, what am I thinking of? There's a there's another couple amazing venues that the band who wins this international grant uh, gets to perform it. So we'll see we'll see this South Korean band um, all over. Country Gong Bang was the name of that uh, the name of that group, and we'll see them come to the states next year because they were a recipient of that of that grant. Um, so anyway, let's if I remember, I'll let you know they're playing at a few other places. Take you through here to the next thing. Oh, I did want to mention that this this stage is being shared by um, Kids on Bluegrass, and uh, oh, well, let me take you to this international thing here. Got to be a little quiet for the performance. I want to share just a couple of the um, the international festivals that are here. So we have. The Westport uh, Westport Festival that I met the owner, uh, the person who runs that, Yuri, who, um, who he puts on a festival in Ireland, a bluegrass festival in Ireland. So we'll look at some of the other ones here. Uh, this looks like a, a roots organization in Ireland. And uh, anything else I recognize here? Uh, this is the the Bluegrass in Europe um, Association. They connect all, all these different places in Europe. And, uh, and a great place to get connected to if you're looking to play or hear bluegrass music in, in, uh, in Europe. We'll see what else is here. Um, bluegrass in La Roche, you heard me mention. That's in France. And it's run by Christopher Howard Williams, a classmate of mine. Uh, some great little stickers here. And anything else? Let's see. All right, well, we'll keep moving here. So again, if you are tuning in now, this is the this is the World of Bluegrass, International Bluegrass Music Association's World of Bluegrass exhi uh, Exhibit Hall, where we have all sorts of instruments, bands, uh, and uh, live, live music, museums, great food and I'm just taking on a little tour here so let's uh the next thing I'd like to share with you is this booth here very close to uh, uh, my heart is the work of uh, the IBMA foundation which we're here um, this is the IBMA foundation booth and we'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat with John in, in just a moment I just wanted to mention that uh, leadership bluegrass which you'll see right here Leadership Bluegrass is a, a three-day intensive where if you're interested in the bluegrass industry, you can grow as a, uh, as a leader. Uh, there are educators, performers, promoters, event producers, association leaders, all sorts of people um, apply for Leadership Bluegrass. And that's a great, uh, I can't say enough about it. Check out my blog post on uh, my experience there. A lot of my classmates are here doing amazing things right now. Uh, and anyway, let's look at some of the branches of the IBMA Foundation. So, um, right now we have a raffle, uh, bluegrass raffle for a Deering banjo. And uh, I want to mention that the, uh, the IBMA Foundation is uh, dedicated to uh, bluegrass education. And they uh, honor grants, they give grants out to students, college students, or uh, people looking to do work in the bluegrass industry that are in need of financial assistance. So Ivy May Foundation, I've, I've worked with to get several school grants. I've visited schools using mini grants from the Ivy May Foundation. They also have what's called the Arnold Schultz Fund, which is here. And the Arnold Schultz Fund is designed to help um, uh, it's in honor of Arnold Schultz, who was a guitar player in early bluegrass music, played with Bill Monroe. Bill Monroe uh, uh, learned a lot from Arnold Schultz, and he's a big reason that we have uh, the blues influence in bluegrass music, uh, is Arnold Schultz's uh, contributions to the music. So this fund is in his honor. It's designed to help bring bluegrass music to uh, people of color and communities of color. So the Arnold Schultz Fund is, uh, uh, has awards grants and uh, and there's projects every year that's involved with that. So let's see if there's anything else we can uh, we can share with you here. Excuse me, I see you videoing. Yeah.
yes, we're uh, we're live on YouTube. Would you like to? Yes. Katie Daly, we're gonna. Hi, how are you? Great to have to be able to join you. I want to let you know about the work of the IBMA Foundation, and one of the things that we do is provide scholarships for college kids who want to study bluegrass. So uh, let me see. It's info at bluegrassfoundation.org. Check it out. The, uh, looking for the scholarship applications in a few months. So it's info bluegrassfoundation.org. That's great. And we see the winners from last year here. Yeah, this year. Uh, this, this, this year, actually. Right. Um, people, uh, a lot of college, college, these are all college students, these, these five? These are all yeah. college students. Awesome. Now, I, I fund one of the scholarships that is for people who want to study to be a bluegrass disc jockey or a radio engineer or live sound, you know, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, we have a scholarship for that. That's so great. Thank you so much for sharing Thank that, Thank you. Katie. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, that's the IBMA Foundation, and we're going to continue going around here. Uh, one more shout out to Leadership Bluegrass. Uh, the alumni reception is the first event at uh, World of Bluegrass, and it's for uh, people who have attended in the past. So I, that was the first thing I went to on Monday night, and, and uh, lots of people are here. We see another classic IBMA experience of uh, four banjos, um, because three is not enough. Yeah. So actually, we see here at this booth uh, my buddy uh, Trevin, who plays with the Ruta Beggars. He's right here. And um, actually, we're stepping in. I'm, I'll be stepping in with them later at a showcase at uh, at six o'clock. I've been friends with them for a real long time. Great band out of uh, out of uh, Boston. And uh, hi, I'm uh, live on YouTube right now. Would you like to talk about the Nepal tours? Yeah. Hi, we lead uh, arts and culture tours to Nepal. We'd love to have you come along. A week of just absolutely mind-blowing adventure in the Valley of Kathmandu, exploring a thousand-year-old culture, never colonized. They're just doing what they do. Yeah. And uh, playing music that's very similar to, to old-time music. They have a they play a traditional fiddle called the sarangi. Um, and uh, yeah, we get to jam with them. We hang out with musicians, instrument makers, potters, painters. It's all about the arts and the culture. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, I actually met um, Tara, who's also who's not here at the booth right now, um, who's been doing this for a long time. I met her in New York City hosting a jam at the Bronx. She's a real big bluegrass fan. And I know she plays all sorts of music, but she ends up um, playing some bluegrass down there in Nepal as well. And so she's got these awesome tours. You want to have a look at it? Watch that on Amazon, the Mountain Music Project. It explores the similarities of the Himalayan mountain music and the Appalachian mountain music, which surprisingly are very similar. Wow. And that is so cool. I'll just give you a quick scan of this table here. Um, lots of, of, uh, of things to learn about the, the Music and Arts Adventures Tour of Nepal. Uh, They've got tons of resources here, so check check out online, check out um, uh, the work of Tara Linhart, and uh, you can see her information here. And uh, if you're even in the remotely interested, make sure to join their email list and and uh, follow up what's what's going on there. We frequently frequently asked questions here. I'm sure these are on the website, so check that out. And uh, thanks so much for sharing. Hey, so I'm Ian, and I'd love to be along there with you. All right, thanks, Ian. All right, so we're um, continuing our little tour here of World of Bluegrass. We have more instruments. There's some Madsen guitars, Alec guitar. Um, I mentioned Ellis mandolins, which my buddy from the Rutabeggers um, play. Uh, we said, oh, we, oh, oh, we have hi to Ian and Tara too. Oh, hey, Stacy, thanks for tuning in. So Ellis, Ellis and Palma Mandolins, my buddy uh, from the Rutabeggers plays in Ellis, and uh, got some friends up in the Northeast that play uh, as well. Uh, I see over here is actually the new executive director of uh, the International Bluegrass Music Association. He's actually starting on Monday, um, and if, if I get a chance to, to check in with him, I will, uh, I'll do so. Um, he's just, uh, just getting settled here. I'm live on YouTube. Would you like to say anything? I'm just interesting you. 
Welcome to Abbey May World of Bluegrass. Y'all yeah. need to come instead of watching this virtual next year. <laughs> You're gonna have yeah. a heck of a party. You will have you'll love it. There's tons of jamming, there's tons of uh, uh, friend friendships, new friendships to be made and live music all throughout the city. And uh, we're excited to uh, have have Ken as the new executive director of Ivy May here. Yep. Lots to see, lots to do, so y'all come join us. Alright, thanks so much, Ken. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we'll continue the tour here. Um, we've got gold tone. I actually myself have a gold tone um, banjo, which I bought to um, to play in a, uh, a musical, actually, the musical Chicago. And uh, it called for sort of this old timey, sort of swingy style of uh, uh, banjo playing. And so I actually, I just muted the fifth string here with a piece of toilet paper and uh, played the show. And I knew I wanted to play bluegrass and old time after. So I kept the, the five string banjo from Gold Tone. Uh, if you're looking for um, both uh, both great, great professional level banjos, but also amazing uh, entry level banjos or these little banjo lalies for, for kids. Um, Gold Tone is your, your place to be. I love this purple one here. Yeah, that's probably what I would have <laughs> so, uh, so make sure to check out Gold Tone. Hi, I'm live on YouTube. You want to say anything here? Oh, here you go ahead. Yeah. Gold Tone. All right, IBMA. Yeah. Awesome. So I was just sharing with them. I've got a gold tone banjo myself, and it looks like you've got things, banjo ladies, and things for kids. You got little humans with small hands. These would be a great way to get them started playing if they're inspired to play banjo. It looks like this one's cool. Yeah, this one lights up. I love it. So cool. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> wow. So cool. Lights up when you play it. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right, so, oh, my personal favorite here, the Violin Shop of Nashville, Tennessee. I bought my current fiddle from the Violin Shop of Nashville, and uh, and uh, there's some five-string fiddles here now. We've got Fred Carpenter, actually, who was the fiddle player who helped me out buying my uh, instrument, and he's demoing a five-string fiddle here. Um, there's really beautiful instruments. Uh, the fiddle I own, which is a Jonathan Cooper fiddle made out of Maine, was uh, was actually uh, on consignment at the Nashville Violin Shop. And as soon as this little live's over here, I'm definitely going to uh, come on over and try some of these fiddles. So um, I'll just share. Let's see if there's anything else I could share with you. Hi, I'm Fred. How are you? I'm live on YouTube and uh, was just sharing how I was uh, talking to you years back when I bought my Jonathan Cooper here at the yes. National Violin Shop. So uh, yeah, anything you'd like to share about the National Violin Shop? Uh, the Violin Shop in Nashville is live and well. Brandon Godden is the new proprietor, and uh, he has got a fiddle addiction, so he's always bringing in good fiddles. I love it. Yeah, that's great. And I uh, every year I come here to Ivy May, I always um, try out these fiddles at the National Violin Shop. Like I said, I'm definitely coming here after to try some out. I almost bought a uh, Russell McCumber last year. I really yeah, loved it. Yeah, that's a good one. And I a think nice it, Cooper here this year, actually. Oh, nice. I'd love to check it, it out. It used to be Martin Hayes. So cool. So Martin Hayes, for, for those of you who don't know, I actually met as a sophomore in high school when I first heard fiddle music at the Berkeley College of Music summer camp. Yeah. Martin Hayes was teaching Irish fiddle there. Yeah. And, uh, this is the uh, 98. 1998. Cool. Beautiful. If you haven't heard his music, just gorgeous Irish fiddle music. Check out Martin Hayes. Yes. And another thing I wanted to mention about the Nashville Violin Shop that I love are these these uh, Fiddle Masters concert series. Yes. So I have a blog post on um, yes. gift ideas for the bluegrass and fiddle lover. Yes. These are on there. Really about beautiful. Five, six, and seven. Uh, performances from Andy Lefwich and Bruce Molsky, Jim Van Cleef, Bobby Hicks. You've seen, maybe if you follow me on YouTube, you've seen my Bobby Hicks series. You know how much of an influence he's been on me and, and uh, all the uh, great breaks he's played over the time. Daryl Anger, Liz Carroll, Stuart Duncan, who was here last night playing at the uh, the awards ceremony. Jeremy Kittle, and Luke Bola, Tim O'Brien, a really great artist all over here. Um, you were going to say something quick about that. Well, yeah. these are just um, 2005, six, and seven. Yeah, we did a, a bunch of concerts and had people kind of fly in and spend a few days jamming. I approached all these great fiddlers and said, who would you like to have on this with you? So we just, we did it three years in a row. Um, 
Sadly, the first volume came out the same year that YouTube was launched. <laughs> that didn't help any. <laughs> That's funny. Well, here we are on YouTube. <laughs> well, I, I think nowadays, though, you do a lot of lives. Yes, um, we on, do have a, I think Instagram or yeah, we're Facebook. Doing, or, yeah, we're doing that. We have a thing in January with Molsky and Daryl Anger. They're going to do that some up there. So it should be some fun stuff. Next That's week. great. Well, Becky Bowler's playing a show there, too. So. We'll be looking out for that, and, and they can f find that where on their Instagram? Uh, Instagram, theviolenceshop.com. So cool. Well, yeah, man. Well, thanks so much, Fred. Thanks, bro. Thank Take care, everybody. Yeah, all right, and make sure to check out the Nashville Violin Shop when you're in Nashville or if you're here at uh, uh, World of Bluegrass next year, which you should totally come. Um, we see lots and lots of fiddles here. Uh, great five-string fiddle. I'm sure I'll be playing, trying this one out um, afterwards. Um, awesome fiddles, and they also have a, uh, uh, if you have a bow from the Nashville Violin Shop, you can actually um, try all these bows and, and trade it out at the same value, which is a really great perk of, of uh, doing business with the Nashville Violin Shop, so check them out for sure. Let's continue our little tour here. Um, the Dario's are on the, on the left, which I'll, um, I think I'll show you in just a minute. I want to make sure I don't I don't miss anything here. I want to uh, give you a full tour of the building here. We've got Mojo from Dark Shadow Studios here. He is the hey, man. Everybody. And uh, definitely check out the bands on his roster and the amazing work he's doing. He plays with Sam Bush. He was just playing last night. And look at that. He's on my fiddle bike. <laughs> Make sure to check out Dark Shadow Studios. Um, let's continue our little tour here. So I want to mention the uh, Seth Mulder and Midnight Run. Great bluegrass band. Uh, good uh, fiddle player, Max Silverstein. I love uh, his playing. Uh, check out that band for sure. I love them last time. The Murphy method is this um, beautiful method I learned about last last year. You know how much I talk about learn the importance of learning by ear on the fiddle. And uh, the Murphy method is uh, is the same for, for banjo. I'm live on YouTube. Would you like to say anything about the Murphy method? Sure, of course. I'm always happy to talk about the Murphy method. It's a way of learning to play bluegrass music by ear. No tablature. So it's good for kids starting out, it's good for adults who don't start playing until their 70s or 80s. It's good for everybody. <laughs> That's awesome. And and you've heard me talk about it over and over again. You know, sheet music and tab uh, can can maybe motivate you to want to play your instrument, but it really can serve as a crutch when you're really when you're trying to learn music. I myself tried to learn bluegrass fiddle music from from uh, books for years, and and it, and and it took quite some time to to um, start start using my ear and, and training my ear in a way that would maybe uh, that would help me jam with others and, and play the music in a in a real fun way. You, I think you connect to the music a little bit more differently when you use your ear, don't you think? Well, I, yeah, I think, and that's sort of the the whole thing about bluegrass. It's improvisational, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're learning from the paper, how do you get the improvising skills? How do you train your ear? So my whole thing is, you start from the ground up. You start training it from. The first banjo roll that you do, you start learning your chord changes, and then that puts you on the path to improvising. Because that's just like you said, that's what bluegrass is all about. That's right, absolutely, and, and I love that. Right from the beginning, you don't have to wait to learn uh, to be creative and to improvise on your instrument. So make sure if you're interested in playing banjo, make sure to check out the Murphy Method. Uh, they've got tons of materials, and uh, and that's Murphy Henry right there who was sharing that was sharing that with you. So. Yes, thank you, Austin. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's continue the tour here. So we've got, like I said, just endless, endless instruments. Oh, the Folk Alliance International. There's no one here right now, but I should mention that this is a, a very important place for people who play bluegrass adjacent music. There's this uh, festival here in Kansas, Missouri, is an uh, important place for uh, booking booking artists who uh, play uh, right outside of the bluegrass. Um, borders here. So um, we've got some more instruments over here. Um, lots and lots of instruments all around. I want to make sure I show you Didario next. That's where we're gonna we're gonna loop around here. Um, but like I said, there's jamming all day. And uh, oh, here's the uh, Floyd Country Store on our way to Didario. So this is a this is an important thing I'd like to share with you. So the Floyd um, Country Store is in uh, Floyd Floyd, Virginia. And uh, actually, my, my another classmate of the Leadership Bluegrass class of 2023 was uh, Dylan Locke, who is uh, who's, who's running up the, the Floyd Country Store down there. So uh, if you're ever passing through, make sure to visit the Floyd Country Store. And I have to uh, shout out to this right here, the Bluegrass Country and Soul 
Um, this is one of the things you'll see on my list of uh, gifts for the bluegrass lover. It's uh, it's a it's the earliest documentary ever capturing bluegrass music um, at a uh, at a bluegrass festival. One of the first bluegrass festivals ever. So you'll see the cast of characters here is unbelievable. Ralph Stanley, uh, Earl Scruggs, Osborne Brothers, J.D. Crow, Mac Wiseman, uh, Tex Logan. Uh, just incredible performances on there and that is both a book and a dvd that uh golden anniversary edition which is what you want to check out so you'll see uh lots of floyd fun floyd country store stuff here and we've got a couple people here representing the floyd country store so i'm live with uh on on, on youtube would you like to say anything about the floyd country store sure yeah so we're in southwest virginia we're a live music venue and we'd love to have folks come join us any day of the week for live performances and jamming uh, we're also home to County Sales, which has been a record store specializing in bluegrass, old time, and early country uh, since 1965 and in Floyd since 1973. So check us out. We'd love to have you. That's great. And I learned from Dylan that there's uh, this very family friendly, lots of kids and families. There's dancing and and uh, and uh, and I, I know they have several programs that make it easier for for kids and families to go. Totally, yeah. We're part of the Handmade Music School, which is a nonprofit specializing in education and preservation of traditional music, old time, bluegrass, mountain music, uh, and we have opportunities for learning music workshops and individual instructions uh, with ways for folks to save on that as well through scholarships. That's so great. Well, thanks, yeah. thanks for sharing, Corbin. Absolutely. Make sure to check out the Floyd. Uh, Floyd Country Store when you're coming through. And say hi to my buddy Dylan Locke, who uh, runs the Floyd Country Store. He is a fellow uh, classmate of mine. Uh, we see, uh, as I'm walking through here, here's Pinecone. Pinecone is a uh, is a great organization uh, for, for preserving and protecting roots music. And we have two people from Pinecone here, so let's see if we can check in with the Pinecone people. Hey guys, I'm live on YouTube. Would you like to say anything about Pinecone? Yeah. Hello out there. So Pinecone is a uh, Central North Carolina organization that promotes uh, roots music, bluegrass, blues, gospel, Celtic, uh, you know, any kind of uh, down home music. And uh, we've got events for all ages, lots of educational things for youngsters, jam sessions, uh, concerts. So check us out. That's great. And my my another leadership bluegrass class member, Jay Wellington. I know he works uh, with Pinecone as well as several friends of mine in the industry. So make sure to check out Pinecone's uh, website. Uh, join their their mailing list here and uh, learn about some of the ways that they support uh, roots music around. Uh, and they, they have a concert series and all that sorts of things. So what are, what are some of the some of the ways that uh, that you uh, support roots music? And you have uh, you host classes and maybe there's scholarships or grants or something. Yeah, we have classes. We help put on the uh, street festival that's going on right now. And in, on our uh, street booth, we have what we call a petting zoo where people can come up and uh, that maybe don't play musical instruments. We have banjos, fiddles, guitars, um, you know, mandolins, whatever, so that they can play around with them, see what it feels like. Uh, we sponsor uh, scholarships for people that are taking music lessons, and that's a rather, rather uh, new new thing that we have going on now. Um, we have free concerts in, in parks and other uh, venues around the area, and we have a, a, you know, like in the big stage, the Memorial Auditorium, we have concerts over there with some big name people. That's a few things. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And what was your name? Tony. Tony. Thanks so much to Tony from Pinecone. Make sure to check them out. And uh, I am actually in the process of uh, working on putting together a list of, of scholarships that you can apply for to... Um, uh, you can apply for these scholarships in order to to attend a camp or take music lessons online. Um, you could use these same same sorts of uh, scholarships for all sorts of camps around the country if you're looking to learn the music. And uh, and make sure to check out uh, Pinecone for that. And, and look out for my blog article on some of the other um, some of the other scholarship opportunities. You'll see. Actually, recently I posted on the YouTube channel another scholarship. Um, 
the Steve Mendel Memorial Scholarship, which is uh, one in honor of Steve Mendel, who passed away recently. He was the guitarist in uh, a Dueling Banjos, that famous uh, that famous recording. So uh, make sure to check that out. That's a scholarship designed for people who are um, learning. Uh, roots music, any roots music. So here we are at uh, Bourgeois Guitars, and my buddy JB from Boston is playing here, jamming with a bunch of people. Um, bourgeois Guitars, my uh, friend, uh, bandmate Tom Polizzi plays a Bourgeois guitar. He loves uh, loves their instruments, so make sure to check them out whenever you get the chance. Um, we're here at Dario. Dario is a uh, um, uh, produces all sorts of music resources here. I have uh, my favorite strings. The strings I have my fiddle right now are Daddario strings. Um, I've got some some uh, Kaplan Vivos. Daddario produces strings of all sorts of kinds. Right so you hear you'll see banjo and mandolin, guitar strings, and all sorts of things. Hey, we're live on YouTube. Would you like to say anything uh, about Daddario? Uh, happy IBMA, and we're stoked to be here. Yeah, we love talking about strings. So cool, and I love their strings. I use them on my fiddle. I've got the the. Um, the Kaplan Vivos, uh, which it looks like they're over here. So uh, the other thing, my favorite thing to share with people about Daddario, here's the strings I have right here. I might buy a set while I'm here, look at that. Uh, Vivo string set, those are my personal favorites. And um, I've got some, some Daddario rosin in my case as well. Um, my favorite thing about Daddario, we'll see if they have them right now, are the uh, fiddle tuners. Uh, their tuners are great in general, all around. They have all-purpose tuners that fit on guitars and uh, mandolins. I've got one one of these on my mandolin now, and uh, they make one that's uh, designed for fiddles. Not sure if they. Oh, here it is, right here. This is the tuner I recommend. It's on my list of uh, uh, bluegrass uh, uh, and fiddle gifts. This is the the tuner I recommend. It clips right onto the uh, the edge of the instrument right there, and you can keep it on in your case. It's a it's a fantastic tuner and. And uh, I recommend it for all, all the people um, that I work with who are trying to tune their instrument in a loud setting. So check out Daddario for their tuners, for their uh, strings, and for the, I've got their capos and all sorts of things. So uh, love Daddario. All right, let's continue our tour here. Thanks so much for joining. And uh, we're at the, uh, we got some, oh, Warren from uh, New York is, is, uh, is here saying, uh, saying hello. That's awesome. Um, so we're continuing our tour here. We've got uh, the Earl Scruggs Center. I just met these people. This is uh, in Shelby, uh, Shelby, North Carolina, the Earl Scruggs Center. Hey, we're doing a quick YouTube Live. Do you want to say anything here? Nothing? <laughs> That's OK. I was, uh, I was here um, just a moment ago learning about the uh, the amazing festival they just started putting on. The, uh, the Earl Scruggs Festival is just in its second year. And uh, they also have um, all sorts of fun little resources. It's a, it's a museum and there's classes and things like that there as well. Um, like I said, the Earl Scruggs Festival is a new festival uh, in its second year. And uh, and I was uh, there's they've got a great video for it here. Check that out. We actually have. I'm uh, doing a little live on YouTube. You want to say something about the festival? Oh, it's great this year. It was absolutely great. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we we really enjoy trying to keep Earl's legacy going, but also we enjoy the people there having a good time. Yeah, we had, and it's a real kid-friendly festival. Awesome, yeah. There, it looks like there's a, a lot of families here. I, they have a great uh, promotional video here. You should check that out on there. Are they have, uh, you're on social media or anything like that, or your website? Yep, right. Uh, Earl Scruggs Music Festival. Awesome. Yep. So you, you can find that online and, and uh, learn about the festival. This year it's happening um, on uh, August 30th through September 1st there. So make sure to check that out. Their lineup was absolutely incredible last year. Could you share some of the people who were playing there last year? Well, Jerry Douglas is our host. We had Dale McCurry Band. We had uh, Earls of Lester. And, and on Sunday night, closed it out with Miss Amy Lou Hearns. That's just and that incredible. was just great. great. So cool. Yeah. And they even had some people from up in my neck of the woods. They had, uh, I think they had Twisted Pine and AJ, right. AJ Lee and all those sorts of folks, good friends of mine that you've probably seen if you're following my stuff. So yep. th thanks, thanks so much. Thank for you. Sharing. All right, good. Come to our festival. Woo!
All right, cool. All right, making our way through here. This is uh, East Tennessee State University. They're one of the only programs. Uh, oh, the, the, where is the festival? That is in uh, North Carolina, uh, about halfway in between uh, Raleigh and, and Asheville, I believe, is the location of the Earl Scruggs Festival. So um, yeah, make sure to check that out online. And, uh, and I'm hoping to get the chance to see them as well. So this is the, um, the Bluegrass and Old Time uh, Music Studies branch of the East Tennessee State University. It's one of the only ones that exists uh, right now to uh, teach and share roots and bluegrass music. And uh, it looks like we have a couple of graduates or students here at the desk. So if I can get a hold of one of them, maybe we can have them introduce the program a little bit. Um, I am a big fan of this. I know of many of the uh, graduates are uh, you know, big name performers in the industry right now. Uh, this is a, a program that uh, is just really one of, the, one of the few that has the option of doing this. Hey, I'm doing a little quick YouTube live. You want to say something about the East Tennessee State University? Awesome, cool. No, no pressure, no pressure at all. Hey, I'm Lizzie Cahalan, and this is Gabe Hebert. We're in the um, ETSU Bluegrass Pride Band. Yes. We're just manning the booth for a few hours and getting ready for our showcase at 6.45 at the youth stage outside. So cool. Yeah. What's your name? I'm Austin, Austin Scalzo. Austin. Yeah, nice, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yep, and I'm a, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Ainsley Porchak's fiddle playing. You should yeah. definitely check that out. And she's awesome. She's a graduate of ETSU, I believe. And, yes. and uh, also one of my fellow classmates for Leadership Bluegrass is, I believe, teaching now at ETSU University. Is that Kalia? Is she teaching there? Yeah. Yeah, I so. I have you're a in a band with her, yeah. actually. Oh, so cool. Awesome. Yeah. So what's the name of that band? Um, <laughs> well, it's an old-time band. That's We're cool. We're studying some other... Other old time bands that have funny names. So yeah. right now we're called the Victorious Hoss Hair Pullers. Oh, okay, well that's a great name right there. You, you heard it from the source. Uh, so make sure to check out the music and uh, and also all the work of the East Tennessee State University. Uh, see if you can, you know, visit and maybe get a lesson with Kalia. She's a great fiddle player, good friend of mine, and uh, fellow classmate. So thanks for the. Yeah. Thank you, Austin. Thanks for sharing. Take care. All right, well, let's continue the tour of our, uh, the rest here. Okay, we saw the Nepal tours. We've got uh, uh, some great photography and art here. This entire section of the festival is, uh, this entire section of the festival here is de dedicated to um, uh, it's Virginia. Hey Terry, how you doing? Hey Terry, I'm doing a quick live, just a tour of the uh, of the place here, and and Terry's a great person to run into because I was just hanging with Terry a couple weeks ago. Uh, Terry is running and heading the uh, Bluegrass Festival, a brand new Bluegrass Festival up in the Northeast called Bluegrass in Heaven, and uh, Rock Hearts were just playing there. I had a great time. I also teach a uh, a class there, a Wernick Method class, and uh, it's just this beautiful location on Lake George. I'll let Terry tell you a little bit about. Well, <laughs> it's hard to explain without seeing a picture of it because the, the key element of it is our hundred, uh, our auditorium built in 1909, mm. and the auditorium is a musical instrument. When you play inside that, the sound is just very special. It's absolutely incredible. It's it's emotional, really, to play and sing in, in that venue. It's a really, really beautiful space to uh, both listen to and perform in. So it's a, it was a gift to be there with the rock arts. So, bluegrass in heaven. Check it out next it year. <laughs> yeah. And this this boy, he <laughs> can play and sing. Oh, thank you Good so much, you. Terry. Good yeah. to see you too, man. All right. <laughs> bluegrass in heaven. Be on the be on the lookout for that. It's such a great space to be, and uh, and I believe it's going to happen in September next year. Bluegrass in heaven. That's Terry who runs that. Terry Baker. Um, so here we are. This is uh, one of the last um, places I want to share with you. This is all the beautiful places you could. Uh, you could go to in um, in Virginia. My buddy uh, Dave Eggers lives in Bristol. He's told me that the uh, it's a really beautiful place to live. Very kind people. You often people visit Bristol on their way if they're driving from the East Coast. Um, they visit Bristol on their. Oh, hi, Starlin. Hi, how are you? Steve. I'm doing a, I'm doing a quick YouTube live. Let's just say hello. Hi. 
This is Starlin from, uh, from Starlin Big John. They're an um, unbelievable showcase group that was playing this year. And, and I met them my first time at Ivy May two years ago. We had a great time jamming, and, and, and she's got pipes of gold right here. Oh, you're a great guy, Austin. We love what you do for bluegrass music. Thank you so much, Starlin. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the Yes, sir, you too. <laughs> All right, so make sure to check out their music. She really has incredible uh, incredible pipes, and uh, she sings with Big John. Together, they just have fantastic harmonies. Um, so like I was saying, Bristol, Bristol, Virginia, is a, is a beautiful place to visit if you're ever, ever on your way down uh, from the East Coast or up to the East Coast. Uh, if you're coming through Virginia, make sure to check out Bristol. I actually stayed in... Uh, in Virginia on my way down to Nashville when I was recording with the Rock Hearts and uh, we had a really great time uh, staying uh, staying there and I'm walking behind a, a performance here now so just taking uh, the Blue Ridge Folklife Festival this is this is actually one I have not been to myself um, in Franklin County Virginia I do have friends who have, who have spent some time in Franklin County Virginia uh, it looks like there's some some Monday night jams if you're coming through, um, and a big festival here. Um, I'm doing a YouTube live. Would you like to say something about uh, about the uh, yeah your Blue Ridge Folklife Festival? Blue Ridge Folklife Festival coming up on our 50th year anniversary. It's October 28th at Fair. Four stages of music: bluegrass, old time, African American gospel, storytelling. We have draft horses, coon dogs, fried apple pies, uh, old fashioned crafts, and plenty of fun for the kids. Wow, that sounds great. It's good to have these family-friendly festivals. A lot of uh, uh, it's, it's good to be able to bring the whole family to these places. So, wh when does this festival happen each year? It's always the fourth Saturday in October. In and October. It's rain or shine. Free parking. You can buy tickets online and save five dollars per ticket. I love it. Well, that sounds great. And, uh, and uh, you know, being October, I might be able to come there myself. That sounds great. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing. <laughs> All right. So check out that festival for sure. That looks fun. And uh, just uh, jumping through the last bit here. Uh, uh, oh, Galax, Virginia. This is a good thing to mention here. So Galax, Virginia is where a... Uh, a uh, the host of the Galax Music Festival happens, and Galax Music Festival is a uh, is a, a festival for bluegrass and old time music that happens in the summer, and it's a you know big camping festival. People camp and, and play all sorts of uh, music till the wee hours. <laughs> so make sure to check out uh, the Galax Music Festival and uh, visit Galax when you're there. Here's a little bit of the live performance here, and again we see another ear trumpet mic being used here. gives you a really great sense of uh, of the next entire five years of activity that you want to do for uh, for bluegrass here. Uh, this is a great booth that I, I'm, I'm excited to share with you. This is the uh, jam booth, and in fact, this is one of my. I was mentioning Dylan Locke before. Dylan Locke was a, a fellow classmate uh, member of mine, and I was just sharing the. I'm, I'm live on YouTube here. We were just sharing about the Floyd Country Store, yeah. and I was talking about you. So here's Dylan himself. Hi, everybody. Um, anything else you want to share about the Floyd Country Store? Oh, man, y'all should come visit. It's a beautiful place, lots of great music and dancing, good food. And uh, we have a lot of fun all week long. We have music Tuesday through Sunday and uh, almost every day of the week. So uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, and we'd love to invite everyone to come and join us. Yeah, that's great. And that's Dylan Locke, a classmate of mine. Remember to check out Leadership Bluegrass, too. It's a great program. Thanks so much. So um, I'll uh, loop back to um, if, if you'd like to say something about jam. Quick thing about jam. So I, I learned about jam a couple of years ago from my buddy Cody Bauer. Uh, 
um, who is a fellow fiddler, and um, and he told me about this great program for kids. I also am aware of it, and you might have seen some of this if you've taken my Warnick Method Bluegrass Jam classes, because uh, that is uh, the jam songbook, Junior Appalachian Musicians, is actually what's used in the Warnick Method. So um, I'm here with Gina Dilk, who is going to share a little bit with uh, about jam. Yes, so um, Junior Appalachian Musicians is a program, an after-school program for kids, usually kind of between the ages of like seven, eight through middle school, after-school program that's centered on the Appalachian region, kind of, a, we're in five states with 58 different programs, so I'm not really sure how many kids go through that, but a ton, and all learning all time and bluegrass music, uh, learning how to play together, and it's been a program for about 20, just over 20 years, started by uh, Helen White around the Grayson area of Virginia, North Carolina. So cool. So if, if uh, kids are maybe in that area and they're looking to learn uh, how to play a bluegrass instrument, even if they maybe do you teach kids from scratch if they've never played the music? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So our kids start from, from scratch all the way to like helping them perform string bands and play. There's a bunch of kids like what uh, we're here in the exhibit hall, but also on Martin Street downtown Raleigh today and tomorrow with a full schedule of student bands playing uh, all day today and tomorrow on Martin Street. Well, that's fantastic. If you heard that right, at the uh, World of Bluegrass Festival, these uh, these kids are going to be performing uh, uh, in little bands that they've formed uh, from they're from all around the world and all around the country. And um, and jam is something you definitely want to be aware of if you if you live in uh, in uh, where are the where's where are the active states for jam? Where, where, where are you? Uh, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky. South Carolina, and then I think soon to be West Virginia, some parts of, but, but all Appalachian region, and within 150 miles of the Galax Independence area, and 150 miles of Knoxville, Tennessee, where Cody is. That's great. Yeah, and my buddy uh, uh, Cody is in Knoxville. Make sure if you're swinging by that you check that out. Um, and I believe in uh, Kentucky as well is something I hadn't mentioned before, the Louisville uh, Folk School, which is something to check out as well. Uh, a lot of my friends work there. So again, that's Jam, Junior Appalachian Musicians, and uh, and it, they're doing great work. Check, it, check out their website, jamkids.org, to learn more about that. And thanks, Gina. All right, we've got a band here, Lindley Creek, which I heard for the first time last year as well. Uh, a couple more things, the Faux Paws out there is a great, great group. Um, Picky Fingers Banjo Podcast. This is something you might have seen me talk about in the past. Um, it's a great podcast. It has information about all sorts of uh, all sorts of bluegrass related stuff. And we have three people from uh, three people from the podcast here. We'll see if any of them will be willing to say something quick on on a little video. Is that be cool? So awesome. So this is the Picky Fingers podcast. I'm the El Mandolins and Beer. Mandolins and Beer, also also a great podcast. You probably heard me mention before. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good to see you. And did I meet you in New York City? In New York City. Remind me your first Fred name. Gordy, Daniel. Daniel, yeah. yeah. I met you at um, Rockwood. Yes, Rockwood. We were hanging out with uh, with Michael. That was a Michael, really good yeah, time. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you enjoying IBM? I am loving it. I've had a great time uh, this whole week. I got here Monday for the Leadership Bluegrass uh, oh, nice. uh, Leadership Bluegrass Night, and uh, and all week been doing great work with the IBMA Foundation, working on finalizing some some education projects. Oh, that's great. I left, I was one of the many things I love about the IBMA is just all the things they do to that you would never think about a festival like this. Everybody walks around the street there and thinks like oh it's just a giant music thing but mm -hmm. there's so much more than that with the community and, and it really is there's a place for everybody there there's parents here with their kids that are learning through kids on bluegrass there's uh there are uh, professionals in every area of the industry there's musicians there's uh, uh, uh there's uh, promoters event coordinators association leaders there's tracks for songwriters it's a uh, really really awesome a place to be if you're involved in any element of the bluegrass industry, or if you just love bluegrass music. So um, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have Daniel share a quick thing about the uh, the mandolins and beer podcast. Yeah, which is a real fun one. Yeah, I just uh, I, I love mandolin, and I interview some of the best players. You know, Jake Jolliffe and Sam Bush, Sierra Hall to young young up and comers. I just want to spread the mandolin word. Like I just want I love the I love the instrument. Mm -hmm. And a podcast seems a way that it can be out in the universe forever. Yeah. And so a hundred years from now, when some kid finds a 
eight string dusty thing. Hopefully they're still making them. They'll be able to find the internet and hear about all these legends, you know, or up and comers. So yeah, just sharing some mandolin love. That's great. Well, thanks so much to Daniel Patrick and make sure to check out that podcast. Uh, I personally listen to it, love it. And, uh, and I feel the same way about podcasts. It's great to put something out in the world that's there, there for good. So we also have the Picky Fingers podcast here. Um, and you've heard me post about these um, when I'm talking about, you know, uh, tips for bluegrass jamming. And they have uh, another episode on harmony singing. You've probably seen me um, talk about that as well. And they have all these different ways of following. That's pretty cool right here. And I should get some of the mandolins, uh, mandolins and beer stuff in here. Peghead Nation's a great place to learn to play all sorts of uh, roots instruments there as well. Um, and uh, some pretty neat, neat little hacks here. Um, Keith, would you want to say anything about uh, Picky Fingers? Yeah, I'd love to. Cool, man. Hey folks, it's Keith Billick. I do the Picky Fingers Banjo Podcast, so at the, the way I put it is it's for banjos and the people who love them. So if you're interested, it's very heavily interview-based. So probably ma many of your favorite banjo players have been interviewed, and it's all about their careers, background, playing style, uh, advice for other banjo players. So uh, a lot of very interesting things. Uh, a lot of personal heroes of mine uh, have been on it. So. Uh, it's really kind of a labor of love, and I'm happy to share banjo stories with everyone else. So, yeah, check it out. It's free to listen to. So, so cool. Well, thanks. Thanks, Keith Billick. Thanks for sharing about that. Make sure to check out the Picky Fingers Banjo. You guys take care. All right, so Into the Fog. We've got another band on the left here. we got a great performance. Uh, this looks like, oh, it's my two of my classmates from the Leadership Bluegrass class. This is... Um, this is Christy Cox, who's uh, uh, originally from Australia. She was performing on the uh, international booth before, and she's performing here on the Bluegrass Standard, uh, which is a, a publication that you can subscribe to online. And uh, and they're hosting this performance here. They're also using ear trumpet mics, which you heard me mention before. Uh, some great music here going on. And it looks like to my left is the Bluegrass Ridge um, TV. And this is, we'll, we'll see if we can get a little bit to hear a little bit from uh, from New Blue here. Um, oh, look at this. I see there's a Bluegrass Jam camp happening here in North Carolina. So uh, Leslie Dare and Susan Wester here now. And uh, I was just uh, hanging out with them, teaching a free um, Warnick Method Jam class down there. Um, I'm doing a, a YouTube live. Would you be interested oh. in saying something about the uh, the Bluegrass Ridge TV? Yeah, I'd love to. Cool, awesome. Hey, everybody. I'm Carolyn Ruth, and I'm with the band New Blue, but I'm also the co-host of Bluegrass Ridge TV. We air on 13 networks and 25 affiliates across the country, five different countries. We're seen in 120 million homes a week. So what we do is we're a video show like MTV or CMT, only it's all bluegrass videos. We show bluegrass videos and we do a special interview every week with an artist or a festival, uh, just to give you a little bit of an inside track and to know what's going on in the bluegrass community. So check us out. You can find out what stations we will be on in your area by going to bluegrassridgetv.com. Hope you'll check it out and I hope you'll give us a watch. Thanks so much, Carol. Thank you. Appreciate that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Take care. So check out Bluegrass Ridge TV there, um, and uh, for great video content on Bluegrass Music. What's that? Oh yeah, I'm gonna try to. If you have a YouTube, I'll tag you on it. That would be great. Yeah, I'm gonna go through with this video and just tag everybody. And if and if you want a portion, if you want me to like send you a copy, so you could use that as a little thing, or you can take a little short out of it or something. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. But yeah, this right here. All right. So I'll maybe give you a chance to listen a little bit to uh, that band that's playing there. We'll see if I skipped anything by accident. We've got the Ruta Beggars just hanging out, jamming here. There's my buddy Noah. Uh, Noah and Micah. Uh, Ruta Beggars are a great band out of uh, out of Boston. A lot, a lot of my good friends are members of the Ruta Beggars. So they're jamming here. And uh, oh, this is a great company I'd like to share. This is the uh, 
the Pluckett Music Company. I love their designs. Uh, there's a, those are Page uh, capos. Those are great capos for your guitar. And Pluckett's got these great designs for bluegrass lovers. Um, I've got one for fiddle, and they just got, I just love their designs so much. And you could actually have them. This is the shirt that I have right here. Uh, this one right here. Love these shirts. Uh, and uh, they just they just make really cool designs. I'm gonna come back here and see one for myself. It looks like they're doing some printing right now, which is pretty neat. They can actually print your design on a shirt, and uh, and then they, you can you can partner with Pluckett to get them uh, uh, to uh, print some of the stuff that you have for your band and things like that. And they can put some of these designs on. It. So make sure to pluck out uh, or <laughs> pluck out. <laughs> Check out Pluckett Music Brands uh, designs here. Um, for more information on that. We have a bunch of people from Pluckett. Um, hey guys, I'm doing a quick live. Does anyone want to say anything about Pluckett? I, I mentioned something quick about you guys doing designs and all that. Here, let me get Maybe it. like 30, 45 seconds or Hi. I'll tag you guys and all that sort of stuff. Hey guys, come down to IBMA here down in the convention center hall. We are doing Pluckett Music Brand. You get to pick your shirt, pick your graphic, and we will make it for you right here and there or get a $10 shirt pre-made from last festivals. Thank you. Thank so good. Thanks so much. Thank Check out Pluckett. Um, I love their shirts. Um, check out their website and buy some stuff online for sure. Um, oh, we have got a. Uh, let me show you a little bit of the music that's happening around the corner here because there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, again, if you're just tuning in now, we have. Uh, we're just walking through the uh, the IBMA. National Bluegrass Music Association's World of Bluegrass, uh, World of Bluegrass Conference. Taking a little uh, walk through here, and uh, let's see who's next. Uh, we have the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music, Moorhead State University. So let's see, study traditional music in a place where bluegrass, old time, and country music history has its roots. So this looks like it's a. They've got a bachelor's of music in bluegrass. Uh, and bluegrass music. We, we saw the uh, ETSU, uh, East Tennessee State University before, and, uh, and uh, this is one of the few programs that offers education in bluegrass music. We're doing a little bluegrass live. Do you want to, or uh, bluegrass live, YouTube live. Would you like to say something about the Morehead State University? Um, I, I think I've been very lucky to have a couple of graduates of Morehead come to my retreats and our students, and super, always super talented, enthusiastic people that are So these retreats happen when? So I, uh, I'm Louisa Branscombe, and I have songwriting retreats uh, usually two or three times a year. And uh, it's called Lyric Mountain, and we're in the beautiful countryside of Asheville, North Carolina. And uh, I've been doing it 34 years. And the money that we raise in the retreats goes to my nonprofit, which goes into the schools in the community and helps kids learn how to write songs and tell their stories. That's so beautiful, and uh, Louisa Branscombe and I were nominated this year for, for uh, Mentor of the Year at, uh, at the uh, IBMA International Bluegrass Music Association. I love Louisa's work. I got to really uh, hear more of her story this week, and I love the, the emphasis she puts on being able to share your story through your songwriting. So make sure to check out her work and uh, the retreats that she does if you're if you're into songwriting or if you're looking to learn how to do that. Be easy to find. Just uh, you can go online and hit Louisa and songwriter, and you'll come up with my website. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, thanks Thank so much, Louisa. Awesome. And check out the uh, Moorhead State University here. For uh, there's looks like there's some students or faculty here that's just that are jamming by the booth. That's the best kind of promo you need. <laughs> Come on over. So you can uh, reach out to them and ask them how to study bluegrass and traditional music in college. What's that? Say something about Lucy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so very proud of Lucy Becker who uh, began coming to the retreats uh, about six months ago. She came on a scholarship and then she joined me on a little tour in Florida playing with my band and met, met this guy over here. So I think the cool thing is the way networking happens and you just have to kind of jump in. And That's awesome. One more time, her full name? Uh, my name? Oh, her full name. So, Lucy Becker, she, she won two scholarships this year at IBM. She got the uh, songwriting scholarship as well as a foundation scholarship. So, I, I'm kind of proud to be associated with her. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, now 
now that you mentioned, I did see Lucy's uh, picture up on that foundation meeting we had. So she she uh, was awarded one of the scholarships I showed you earlier from the IBMA Foundation. So that's a really good thing to be aware of. Thanks, Lucy. All right. So great jamming happening here. Um, we're almost at the end here. I want to make sure I catch every, a little bit of everybody here and uh, making our final final loop around here exploring the International Bluegrass Music Association World of Bluegrass Conference. So, um, tone slabs we have in the right here are fantastic um, picks. They are, uh, I know Frank Sullivan plays one, you'll see him on here. And, and uh, they have some really, really great picks. I'm a fan of, uh, of, of uh, tort I have a tortoiseshell pick, and, and I, I know that the, the only thing next to tortoiseshell that I like are tone slabs. <laughs> so make sure to check, check out tone slabs here um, on their website, toneslabs.com. And if you're down in the area, you can definitely check out uh, some of the work they're doing, uh, making great picks. All right, so the bluegrass standards here. And uh, here's the, the, uh, the, he's always in the brightest, most interesting colors here. Uh, we have the host of the Bluegrass Standard right here with me. Now let's see if we can get a quick little interview with, uh, with the Bluegrass Standard. Um, and th we're, at the, we're at the edge of the festival now, and I've got maybe just one or two more places I'd like to share with you. Um, looks like the Bluegrass Standard guy is, uh, he's all caught up. So, so we'll make another uh, loop back to there. I do want to share, um, uh, some stuff going on over here. There's uh, the Bluegrass Pride organization here. Um, I have not met these people personally. Um, and we have R.C. William Co. So, hi, I'm doing a quick YouTube live. You want to talk about Bluegrass Pride? Bluegrass Pride is an organization to welcome poor people in the bluegrass community into a safe space. And they can be themselves and also play bluegrass. Awesome. Bluegrass is for everyone. That's great. And where is, is it? Uh, are you uh, located in any area, or is it mostly online where it's people can online. learn about you? Yep, it's bluegrasspride.net, and it, we're nationwide. We've got members all over the country. That's great. Yeah. So cool. So I'll I'll just take a quick little uh, yeah, shot of the table here, and you can learn more uh, about their mission on their website, and uh, you can get involved if you're interested in that sort of work. Here, it looks like they have. Uh, they, you can probably sign up for their email list to keep in touch um, and and this is uh, Rebecca Jones we heard from thank you so much for sharing uh, all right so it looks like we're uh, there's two more people I want to share with you this is active potential and then uh, my, my good friend Lisa Joy works with them and and she uh, she does uh, work with artists and breath work and stretching and things like that to keep people limber. I'm uh, here at the Bluegrass Standard and we look like it looks like we we, we can get a hold of uh, the guy here. Hey man, Keith, how are you? I'm doing a I'm doing a little YouTube live. You want to see sure. Oh yeah. Bluegrass Standard? Yeah, we're the Bluegrass Standard magazine. We're an online magazine that's digital. It's always free. Sign up at thebluegrassstandard.com and uh, you can get it every month. All free. It's always been free and it'll always be free. So. Come join us. That's beautiful. Well, thanks, Keith. Thanks. I, I know that I know that I uh, I subscribe to the Bluegrass Standard. And yeah, the Bluegrass Standard stuff. Magazine. Or get it played. It's for artists, labels, and um, uh, uh, bands, artists, labels, DJs. An uh, inexpensive way to get music to the radio. Uh, we have Turbine Records, our label, and also part of Bluegrass Rage TV. So videos on television about bluegrass music and all that good stuff. So look us up. Thanks so much. Thank Keith. you, buddy. All right. Take care. All right. One more person to share with you, and that is Signature Sound. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, the active potential booth here uh, is the last thing I want to make sure that that you don't miss. And I want to thank you for tuning in this this uh, this tour of the International Bluegrass Music Association. And here is Lisa Joy. Lisa Joy. I am doing a YouTube live, and I'm I'm just finishing up now. You're the last you're last the little booth. So. Oh my gosh, we're just packing up from the health hub. But let's maybe we should go. Oh over yeah, there. let's just get a little tour of the health hub and. Yeah, yeah, we just packed up the health hub. But it was really great to have a whole zone here at the IBMAs. Just trying to get on your YouTube so there. Cool. There we go. We had um, 
free hearing screenings. So if you want to get your hearing tested, get a baseline of what's going on there. We had this area, which was a safe space, chill zone. And we had a bunch of different movement, mindset, and breathwork technique workshops there as well, which was all part of the health track. And then we did one-on-one -on -one postural consultations uh, while we were out here in the health lab with uh, different musicians going through what's uh, happening in your bodies. That is so cool. And I met Lisa Joy two years ago, and she was actually helping with some uh, back pain that I was getting from playing fiddle. And she helped me realize, uh, you know, you don't have to be in pain all the time when you're on the road playing music. So make sure to check out Active Potential. Yeah, check out. We're on uh, YouTube as well at Active Potential. And we're also www.activepotential.com. We have a special membership just for musicians so that you can be out of pain and feeling and performing your best. Oh, that's great. Well, thanks, Lisa Joy. Thanks, Austin. All right, we'll, we'll tag active potential there, and and I believe uh, now that we've made our way around the whole the whole uh, exhibition hall, I believe that we'll uh, we'll stop there. There might have been a couple booths I I uh, I have uh, missed. There's so much to do here, um, and and we hope one day you'll come by and and, and check out the amazing. Uh, amazing things that you could do at uh, the International Bluegrass Music Association's World of Bluegrass Conference. So, um, yeah, I'm Austin Scalzo. Thanks for checking in. I'll tag these these uh, these people here. It's been my joy to, to uh, spend the afternoon here at the uh, at the festival. All right, signing off. Take care. Look at me. I'm uh, so bad at this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hmm, there's a filter button.